Hello, this is Emily from the future here. I have actually already done the half marathon. I wanted to walk you through what the whole morning and then the day of the race look like. So let's get started. Good morning. Let's go run a half marathon. I'm running a half marathon today and you're balancing on a banana. I'm just moving on to my second portion of porridge because I didn't realise how tiny those sachets were and I was like, why am I so hungry? And it's because the sachets are like 35 grams. Um, so I'm just having some more, it's 6.30 now. Um, I've also got a banana for an hour or so if I'm still hungry. I've had like... I don't know, 500 ml of water, maybe. Um, and I think we're gonna leave in like an hour and 40, depending on traffic. It's cold, I think, outside. and I'm wearing shorts and a vest. <laughs> um, I'm not doing bag drop, so I, I'm not taking a jumper with me. So I think I might just have to suck it up until I start running kind of annoying because it's like I leave at eight ish but then the race isn't actually starting between from 9 45 to 10 so it's a lot of standing around and that was why I realized when I did the half marathon a few years ago is you are kind of weighing around but yeah that's just how it is I guess okay so Heading out in about 15 minutes, just thought I'd show you where I'm at. Got the pin. This is very hard to pin, like, it's still a bit spacious, but that's fine. Electrolytes, I've got gels in a pocket, headphones. This is the outfit of choice. Shorts are sweaty betty, top is sweaty betty. Sports bar is Gymshark, this is Salomon. Um, and I'm wearing this because it's the one that I felt most comfortable in on one of my long runs, so that's why I've opted for this. I don't know whether to do cap or no cap. That's kind of my dilemma at the minute. I don't know. And then because it's like five degrees outside, I was gonna shove just this top on because I can put it in here when the race starts. But I think because I've got my water in there now, it might look a bit weird. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's on the wrong way around. I mean... <laughs> you can kind of tell that there's something there. I don't know. We'll see. Basically ready to go now. I'm excited. So, fingers crossed. So I didn't actually take a jumper with me before I started the race, which to be honest was a bit of an error because it was like five degrees um, at that time in the morning and it was fine at first and then it got to a point where my hands were hurting because they were so cold. So um, I just didn't want to do the bag drop and I had nobody there watching at the start of the race that I could give all of my bits to. So I just sucked it up, but it was for almost two hours. So... If you get cold easily, luckily I'm from the north and I like to think that I can handle the cold. But if you get cold easily, then definitely wrap up and do the bag drop or give your bits to someone that can take them um, as you start running because it was really bloody cold. The atmosphere at the start of the run was so lovely. There was honestly so many people that I didn't realise how big the race was. I think there was like... 12,000 runners in total they said on the day and there was quite a long walk and a bit of waiting from 
the like race village to the starting line I was obviously in one of the groups that goes last so I don't think we started running until about 10 I think I crossed the start line like just after 10 in the morning everybody there was in a really good mood uh everyone I think was just excited to get started because we'd been waiting so long to go and also the weather the weather I don't think we could have um got better weather it was I think around like eight or nine degrees for the whole race but it was sunny so there was no rain there wasn't any wind 10 out of 10. I would say that the first 10k was for me it was easy and it was enjoyable I was having a good time I didn't feel tired I didn't feel out of breath or anything like that I kept my pace um slow obviously um I think I could looking back now I think I could have gone slower because my first couple of kilometers were around 7.05, I think, minutes a kilometer. Sure? Okay, 10 seconds. Average ended up being 7.40 something. So something went a bit wrong there. And I, even though I was telling myself to go slow at the start, I, I could have gone a little bit slower. But yeah, that's just how that ended up happening. And 10k in, I was feeling, feeling good. I think it was about 45 minutes in when I had my first gel. I normally was, go I was going to wait until I got to 10k, which for me would have been about an hour and 10 minutes, maybe. I don't know. But I had it uh, after 45 minutes because I was chatting with a really lovely girl before who said take the gel before you get tired so much more sense I don't know why I was waiting until I was like on death's door to take the gel so I took it 45 minutes into the race um rather than doing the full 10k which I think did help when I got to um 16k I still felt like I had the energy to do it but I will say when I got to 16 17k that's when I started to get a little bit fatigued just getting that little bit of uncomfortableness and to be fair like I expected I was expecting to feel that way at that distance because I'd only run a 15k once and an 18k once before that this year so uh, my body wasn't massively used to being like in that that zone I would say but there was one part of the run that I will say for me, and I don't know if anybody else who did Oxford that is watching this feels the same, but it was really hard. And it was the bit where, that it, it went on for quite a bit, but there was one, one specific bit that was really tough. And it's where you come out of like the main bit of town and you're running or like down an A road and you run morning, morning. down this road and then you come into a village and then there's more of that road. And then you finally come like out back through a park and then you're in Oxford again so it was the bit like in between the village bit where it's just road and there is no one else there like very very few people there there was hardly any um like spectators um and it was just this road and at this point it was like nine degrees and I'm not joking it felt like 25 <laughs> degrees to me because it was just this open road that went on forever and then I think it was probably midday by this point and it just felt so fucking hot and I was like I, it's like the perfect condition to be running I don't know why I am sweating so much but um that was the hardest bit and once I got through that I was so relieved because I think mentally that was like I was like okay for me this was a hard bit and I've I've done that I've achieved that now so I I know that I can finish when I got to 18k I was like yeah I know I can finish this three more k easy that last three k was mentally very hard because by this point I hadn't stopped running um I'd stopped running for probably like five seconds when um they had like water stations at specific points throughout the run they don't give you water bottles they just have loads of um volunteers that are basically like handing you paper cups of water and then you just throw it into the recycling so um i did do one or two of those towards mid and end of the run because i only had one um one bottle with me which just had electrolyte in electrolytes in and I really wanted some just like plain cold water other than that I ran the entire thing and that is the longest that I've ever run uh totally non-stop um but I'll 
I'll touch on that towards the end of the video. But anyway, one thing actually that I kept telling myself throughout the run was I feel like I'm always like preaching on here and on Instagram that you you know you don't need to run quickly it's all about enjoying the run um and you know just having that sense of achievement whatever that is for you so I kept saying to myself well if pace isn't a problem then this is easy like if pace isn't an issue then why are you like, every time I wanted to speed up I'm like pace isn't an issue why are you speeding up just stay at this pace because it's comfortable and I know I can finish at this pace so maybe tell yourself that if obviously if you're trying to get a certain time then this is shit advice <laughs> but if you are just wanting to get out there and just complete the half marathon or complete the 10k or whatever it is that you're doing just keep telling yourself like if pace isn't what I'm here for why am I pushing myself into a place where this is uncomfortable and I might potentially not finish that really helped me because it made me chill out it took the pressure off I was like yeah fine well, I'll finish it and I'll finish it whenever that may be. Once you finally came out from that little road where there was no one, you, I think you start then making your way back into town. But before you get there, there's this park that you that we ran through. And again, that was really hard because, um, first of all, it's a bit more uneven on your feet, which for me, I don't like. My feet don't like that. My ankles don't like that. Thank God it was only like a kilometer long if that. I don't think they were really allowing any spectators in the park. There was like a couple of people but it was mainly just people going about their day really. It was also hard again there weren't any people like shouting your name which really helps when you've got your little name badge on and yeah that was hard and then you come out of that and then you're I think basically back like in the center um, and it, then it gets kind of windy which for me was annoying because <laughs> I knew that I was like a kilometre, 800 metres, whatever it was, away from the finish line. But because I was, like, running, like, round the streets, I couldn't see it until maybe the last, like, 300 metres, I think. So I was like, where the fuck is this finish line? Like, I know it's here because my watch is telling me I've already run 20k, like, over 20k. It took a while to see it, and that was just, like, a little mental challenge towards the end. But then I saw my family, and I was like, oh, I know that they're near the start line. The finish line, sorry, went around the corner, and the finish line uh, was there. And yeah, and then I finished it. Look at this, Rita! Let me get my final time. Final chip time was two hours, 41 minutes and 46 seconds, which I believe is an average pace of seven minutes, 42 a kilometer, which is 12, 23, minutes a mile sorry i'm trying to include miles because i know that i have a lot of um americans and other people that watch so i just want to <laughs> make sure that i include that so you don't have to do any maths it was a few minutes slower than my half marathon that i did in 2019 which i did in about two hours and 38 minutes i think something something like that but one thing i have i will say is i feel so much more proud of myself for doing this most recent half than my first one as i said before i ran the whole thing minus i don't know like 40 seconds that i was walking um and for me being able to run for two hours and 40 minutes is pretty like crazy um i never thought i'd be able to run for that long no matter what the pace, if you're running for that long, like that is insane. Um, and I remember when I did my first half, uh, the f I ran 10K without stopping and then I walked from 10K and then I was kind of like run walking for the, um, the last part of the run. But the first time that I'd run 10K without stopping was during my half marathon, like my first half marathon, uh, which is wild, like, now I know that I can run 10k without stopping. So it's crazy to me that I couldn't do that then, but now I can do that, you know, albeit my pace is slower, but I feel, I just feel like my stamina and my fitness has improved for me to be able to run for that amount of time without stopping. It's pretty cool, really. I never thought I'd be able to do that looking back when I started taking running seriously again, like six months ago, because I could barely run 5k without stopping six months ago so it is crazy what you can achieve in a relatively short amount of time so I'm just excited to see how I progress now to the marathon which is obviously the next big thing and I will say it's a bit of a humbling experience when you finish a half marathon and you're like that's only half of a marathon do you know what I mean like 
I've got to do that again. But we're not thinking about that because I'm not ready to run a marathon yet. Thank God I've got another six months. So but I am resting all of this week. Then from next week, I'm going to be starting the pre-marathon plan, which is on the runner app. Also a big shout out to runner who were able to get a spot for me at the Oxford half. Thank you very, very much. Do have a runner code um below that you can get two weeks free if you are in need of a running plan i'm starting the pre-marathon runner plan next week i'll be doing a mixture of runs i'm gonna aim for three runs a week and then also two gym strength sessions a week all within the runner app which is great and that is basically my roundup of my second half marathon i have my medal actually really it's a nice medal here we go proof that i uh finished it I'm really annoyed at myself though because I obviously got a medal for doing the Manchester half when I did that but I hated running so much after that and I was so convinced that I would never run again that I threw it in the bin and I'm a bit <laughs> I'm actually really pissed off with myself for doing that so maybe I need to run the Manchester half again just so I can have another medal but um she did it and that is it for this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it definitely recommend the oxford half it was really fun oxford is a beautiful beautiful place i uh, hope you have a lovely day uh whatever you're doing wherever you are and i'll see you in the next video